guys, welcome to this week's teen challenge. I'm Corinne. I'm a storyteller here at the Avondale Library. I believe that anybody, if they have the right building blocks, can learn how to write songs. Writing songs is such a good way to express yourself, speak truth, with connect with people. I am going to challenge you over the next three weeks to write a song, but I'm not gonna leave you alone to do it. I'm gonna give you all of the building blocks that you need. The first thing that you're gonna need is an instrument, sort of. One of the great things about modern technology is that you can have an instrument right on your phone or your iPad or your computer. Another instrument that I really love is ukulele. We actually circulate these at the Avondale Library. Of course, things are a little bit weird right now, but once everything gets back to normal, you can check one of these out. This is mine, but a very similar one. It's really easy, it's really fun, and we have books on how to learn as well. Another great songwriting instrument is the guitar, duh. I mean, how many great songs have been written on the guitar? One of my favorite instruments to write songs on is the piano, and that's what I have today. I actually have my keyboard. Build get your instrument or get out your app because we are going to learn the building blocks of a song. So songs are made up of chords, right? And you can find chord charts for guitar, ukulele, piano, other instruments on the internet, anywhere. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking about chords, except I am going to teach you how to find the right chords that you need for your song. A lot of songs only use three or four chords. In fact, I would bet that a lot of your favorite songs or a lot of songs that you've heard a lot have the same four chords throughout the whole song and the same chords as other songs. What would I do without your smart mouth? Drawing me in and you kicking me out. Well, I'm in great till they gotta be free. Don't tax me and tell it straight to my face. This feeling inside my bones It goes electric wavy when I turn it on This is my fight song Take back my life song Hello, it's me I was wondering if after all these years you liked me Cause the play is gonna play, 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 play Same four chords, all those songs, same four chords. Now, these are not the only four chords in existence, but if all of those major smash hits can use just four chords, then we can start with those four chords. You probably already know that music has an alphabet. It's the same as the regular alphabet. Uh, we go A, B, e, C, D, E, F, G. And then we start all over again with A, but this time it's higher. Oh, come on, get with the program. A, B, A. G, on and on and on. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, on and on and on into infinity until not even dogs can hear it. A chord is made up of three notes. If we're going to do a C chord, we're going to start with C. And then we're going to skip D and we're going to play E. We're going to skip F and we're going to play G. That's a C chord. 
C E G. Like I said earlier, I am not going to go through how to build every single chord. I am here to tell you how to find the four magic chords that all of those songs had. So every song has a root chord, which is the same as the key. We also call this the one chord. This is an I, so it's the Roman numeral for one. Musicians are kind of old school, so we use Roman numerals. We're going to do the key of C, which means that C is going to be our one chord. What? What? What are you doing? It means C is going to be the one chord. The next chord we need is the four chord. Roman numeral four. four. We have to count up four from C. One, two, three, four. F. F is our four chord. So we have C and we have F. The next thing we need is the five chord. And that's going to be G because one, two, three, four, five. G. The, ne the next thing we need is the six chord. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six chord is A. Look, this Roman numeral is lowercase letters, and that's what we use to show that we have a minor chord. The six chord is always a minor chord. What's the difference between a major and a minor? So the difference between a major chord and a minor chord is that a minor chord, the middle note, so again, if we're doing A, we have A, C, E, the middle note is a half step lower in a minor chord. So if we were gonna make this A, C, E into a major chord, we would need to go a half step up, whatever's between C and D, which is C sharp, A, C sharp, E. We're playing A minor because A is our sixth chord and it has to be minor. So we're doing A, C, E. Remember that I said that the root is the same as the key? So what if we want to play in a different key? What does that even mean? Let's say we're going to play in the key of G. Our new root chord is the G chord. And our new four chord, one, two, three, four, is C. And our new five chord is D. And our new six chord is E minor. So why play in a different key? Well, there's a couple of different reasons. The first one is, in some instruments, it's easier to play one key than another. For ukulele, it's a little bit easier to play in the key of C than it is to play in the key of G. Whereas on the guitar, in my opinion, it's easier to play in the key of G than it is to play in the key of C. If in the key of C, you have to play an F chord, which on the guitar is a bar chord, and I have tiny hands! Tiny hands! So depending on what instrument you have, what you're comfortable playing, you may want to choose your key for that reason. Another reason why we change keys is because of our vocal ranges, our voices. So, for example, earlier when I was playing all of those magic four chord songs, I played I Will Always Love You, which was famously sung by the incredible Whitney Houston. Side note, fun fact, it was actually written by Dolly Parton, another amazing musician and singer. Both of them I cannot even hold a candle to when it comes to singing. I, the key that I sang the song in earlier, it was a little bit on the low end of my range. But I will always love you. Yeah, I can sing it. It's a little uncomfortable. I should switch it to G, which would make it higher. So. But I will always love you. I will always love you. Maybe I should just leave it to Whitney Houston and Dolly Parton. But I get to pick a key that works best for my voice when I'm writing my song, and I want you to do the same. Back to our four magic chords. Your challenge this week is to find the four magic chords. Remember, we have the one chord, the four chord, the five chord, and the six chord. Start, I recommend starting in the key of C, which again is C for the one chord, 
F is the four chord, G is the five chord, and A minor is the six chord. Or starting in G, because G is the one chord, C is the four chord, D is the five chord, and E minor is the six chord. Find these on your instrument, and if you don't have an instrument, remember you can use an iPad or a tablet or a smartphone that has a piano app or a guitar app or any kind of music app. Just have fun. Explore music. So find your chords and play around with them because you can actually do them in different order. You don't have to do it in order. One, four, five, six. You do one, five, one, six, one, five, one, six, one, four, five. Do six, one, five, That is one of the ways that different songs have a different sound with the same four chords. Because all those songs that I played earlier, they were different songs. They sounded like different songs. One of the ways that they do that is by playing them in different orders or different progressions. A chord progression is the order in which you play the chords. So your challenge, find the four chords and play around with different progressions of those chords and see what you like. Next week, we are going to talk about how you can use your chord progression to create the mood that you want for your song. Something, for example, you could have something fun. Something kind of sad. Something powerful. Same four chords, different order, different sound, different mood. You have your challenge, go work on it, and next week come back and we're going to talk about those different moods and also how to structure the shape of your song.